I'm going to have to change the name of the format here a little bit. Welcome to shelf number two, <laughs> tier one. <laughs> oh boy, we've gotten to the next shelf and that's, that's just great. I'm so excited for that. As you can see, it is a little bit of a hodgepodge, but it's all Star Trek. Um, some of my favorite things that I've collected over the years. We'll get started right now. This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard standing over top of a dead Borg. I bought this just because, I don't know, the novelty is really funny. He has minimal articulation. I think his arm can go down somehow. Ooh, God. But this one is always pointed yeah, at another Borg. Um, and then you've got a, a torso twist function. His head kind of moves. So I don't have to look where I'm shooting. Oh, I will. <laughs> can be like, oh no, that was a bad thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this is from Diamond Select, if I am not mistaken. Yep, Diamond Select. I bought this one for the novelty. Um, he's on pegs, as you can kind of see there. His feet have pegs, so he can kind of stand by himself, but he's really made for the little diorama here um, where his feet go. So this is Jean-Luc Picard standing over a Borg with his phaser, and he really needs dusted. Up next, I want to talk about this. Um, one of my dearest friends, who I unfortunately have lost, won $500 in a lottery. I think it was the actual Ohio lottery. And on top of buying terrible cigars and too many CDs that he never listened to, he bought these collector's plates. This one is the only one <laughs> that looks nice. The rest, I mean, look, look at that. I mean, they really tried to young up um, Commander Riker. Data just looks like he stepped in dog poop. Um, I, I don't even ha know where to begin with Dr. Crusher. Deanna looks, just looks like a younger version of herself. Worf looks really good. They hit the mark on that. Jordy looks really good. Captain Picard, of course, looks okay and fine. But I mean, what is that? And look at this. I mean, look at, look at his eyebrow marks. I mean, what is that? It's a commemorative plate showing the length of the show. Um, on the back, you get a special commemorative edition, edition limited to 35 firing days, which means absolutely nothing because they probably put out thousands and thousands of these. So, I mean, we only fire these for 45 days, but I mean, who cares? That's ridiculous. What a silly way to measure something. Um, but yeah, so this is a Star Trek The Next Generation commemorative plate, and it sits on tier one of shelf two. Over here to my right 
It is Jedzia Dax in plastic. <laughs> I don't know. These just appealed to me. I don't even remember where they came from exactly. Look at this type two ph phaser. It's orange. A biological sample collector. Purple. Starfleet tricorder. Kinda. I mean, and they're all in here. I mean, it's weird because it shows that, but then look, there's the phaser. The phaser looks right. Up here, the phaser um, looks like a multivitamin. Um, and then the other people that you can collect at the bottom. The box is not great. Someday it may be a good idea to get rid of the box and just keep the figure. Um, her hair, um, some, sometimes the hair with these characters are um, real. And I'll actually come to a character next that will show that is this kind of character uh, done by Playmates down here um, that is actually have real real hair. It's really strange that she does not. But um, yeah, so that's Jadzia Dax in a box. Let's talk about hair. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at the lifelike lifelike hair air quotes um, on Worf here. I mean, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Worf. Comes with a Batleth and a phaser rifle, um, as outlined back here. Ooh, and a tricorder is hidden in there somewhere. But yeah, you can comb Worf's hair. Doesn't that, doesn't, isn't that just delightful? And then here is everyone else to see. But yeah, so there's Worf. So something at the top of this one reminded me why I probably bought all of these. <laughs> Five dollars. <laughs> uh, that's funny. But yeah, so here is Commander Cisco, pre-shaved uh, head and mustache and beard and goatee, I guess it was. Um, but yeah, here he is. He's the command edition. Jadzia is the Federation edition and Worf is the Starfleet edition. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, but Playmates did, and they did this. So, and you know, it's it. They're they're decent likenesses for for what something that's basically a Ken and Barbie doll. Um, what's also really funny is even though he's in a jumpsuit, he gets the Starfleet TNG badge, whereas Dax got the newer badge from DS Nine. So. I don't know what that's all about. Sorry, Dax. Next, we come to Lieutenant Commander Data as seen in Chain of Command. These two Datas that are coming up were uh, incredibly rare, I guess. It's really strange. Um, for some reason, these these just uh, these were just hard to get a hold of. Um, I will say that this one usually goes for around $200 on eBay. I got very lucky and, and got in an estate sale when somebody put a bunch of stuff up on eBay and I was able to score it for, I think, around 80, um, which may still seem like a lot. But, um, you know, if, if you're collecting a series and you have the ability to do so, you might as well just, just go for it. Um, as you can see, there's Spot, and apparently Spot is Starfleet gear, a tricorder and a violin and is that part of his head for his positronic brain does his head come off oh yeah you can kind of see um back here i never noticed that before he does have a little bit of a place back there where uh his brain is exposed i don't know if you can see that or not but yeah but that's the top of his skull who knew? I never really looked that closely. And it doesn't really... I didn't know the top of the skull was Starfleet gear. But yes, this is Lieutenant Data as seen in Chain of Command. Now here is Commander Data again. As you can see, uh, the top of his head's missing. But that's because this is the first contact edition. And this is what, of course, the Borg Queen does to him to make him feel. Um, you can see he's got his arm there. His arm will detach and you can put that on there to show there's his uh, body. There's the top of his skull again and there is a good head that you can put on that apparently, yeah, the positronic everything is kind of 
You can kind of see it in there on the top of his head, his second head. Um, a really fun figure. I, I think that the I think that these are great. And as you can see, this one's numbered, and it's numbered correctly. It's handwritten, and it's of a certain type. So uh, 613 of 1701, which is they did that a lot with figures and collectibles after a certain point. Um, yeah, so this is 613 out of 1701, which of course is the ship Enterprise designation NCC 1701. No bloody A, B, C, or D. From Star Trek First Contact, Lieutenant Commander Data. He's got the pips for it. Damn it, Jim, I'm a doll, not a doctor. McCoy, Leonard H., son of David. And there he is with a beard. So yeah, so this is, uh, of course, Dr. McCoy, as seen in Star Trek, the original TV series. And I, I just found this, I think this is the first one of these kind of boxes and figures that I purchased. I, I, just, I just thought it was... The presentation was really wonderful. Um, these are Playmates again. Um, and here's the history. I can play it like a reverse Star Wars. There you go. And I think the figure is a really nice likeness of DeForest Kelly. What's really funny is this has never been opened. And his face... His face is dirty. Yeah. Weird. But, um, yeah, so this is also up there on my uh, tier one of my shelf number two. We are the Bork. Resistance is, I mean, it'll happen sometimes. Yeah, so <laughs> this unfortunate soldier turned Borg is a select figure. Whatever that means. Um, he's got a lot of bits and pieces to him. Uh, different arms. Uh, a different chest piece, two different heads, and a couple of face attachments. And if you look really closely, you can actually see holes in this head, at least. Those parts can be attached to his face. This one looks a little Klingon. Yeah. Or Bajoran. I mean, the nose ridges are really strange. But the head looks Klingon. And the, but the nose ridges, that looks very Bajoran. Um, that's a human looking face, I think. But yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. I just thought that this looked fun and funny. Um, when was this released? 2019. Um, comic Shop Locator Services and then uh, Diamond Select Toys. Yeah. I don't know. It's not, <laughs> it's not, um, it's not the greatest thing Diamond Select has ever put out. In fact, I think I showed you. Uh, both datas. I think they're probably the best thing that they put out. I would put these two together with um, the kind of quality they hit at a certain point. Um, but uh, the definitely past the heyday of the early 2000s, early and late 2000s, which is unfortunate. So Borg with many Borg pieces. I wonder if that's a hat. Now we come to these two really cool things that I will touch on briefly and probably do a video on uh, extensively at some point. These are Japanese only release with DVD sets, little trinkets. So this came with the original series Galaxy box DVD set back in 2004. And it is a tricorder. From TOS. It's not just any tricorder though, as if you flip it open, it is an AM radio, AM FM radio. Unfortunately, the band is Japanese, so our FM bands uh, are of a, of a different, FM and AM bands are of a different setting, so they're at a lower frequency than ours. Yeah, see their FM, if you can read that, is 70, 76 to 82. And you know, we go from what, 88 to 107, 10, yeah, 107 
up in that area. So yeah, so unfortunately it's on a totally different wavelength um, than what we have. But it's also really fun because it is, that's a sticker by the way. You can put it up to your TV and it will light these lights up and show signal coming off of your TV. So it, it's, it's a fun little thing. It, it's just something that I saw. I don't think this, oh it does. Yeah, there's a headphone jack in there. I think this is where the batteries go. Yeah, it takes three AA batteries and a nine volt. Isn't that funny? But it's just a well-made, wonderful prop. And it's got a nice leather strap. Um, yeah, I just saw this on eBay. Um, somebody had portioned out the DVDs and this was a DVD extra. Um, that was sold only in Japan. And I saw it on eBay and I'm like, that is amazing. And it's a very wonderful likeness of a TOS tricorder. And last we have this, which came with the complete season of Star Trek on DVD in Japan. Um, this is 2002. So it came out actually before the, the box series for uh, TOS. Uh, these are the original batteries that have never been opened that came with it. And what it is, I think this is really cool, even though it's weird and silly, but who, who doesn't love weird and silly? It's a tricorder from TNG, but it's a remote. It's a remote for a specific DVD player <laughs> that does not exist in the US. Uh, <laughs> TV input, menu, um, it doesn't really light up. Um, I don't even think it really makes sounds. It's just the novelty of the size. I mean, it's huge. Um, video, DVD, TV. This is the IR uh, for the TV or for the remote. Um, yeah, volume channel. It is a DVD remote control. And I just thought it was absolutely darling. And I don't think this was 20 bucks shipped. I'm pretty sure that it was not very expensive, but there again, it, one of those things that's not meant for resale, like it says on the box, in English, by the way, um, but is just such a fun novelty, and I'm glad that they offered it up, and it sets on my shelf in, in its box, in its bubble wrap, in its box. It has instructions, but they're all in, in Japanese. Um, at some point in the future, I'll do a deeper dive. I'll do a deeper video dive on this and we'll use the Google Translate that I have on my phone to uh, kind of just highlight. We'll put batteries in them. Uh, that one is especially funny because this, the frequencies, there's just nothing there. Um, it's just static. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's a DVD remote for a DVD play. Look, it's got 12 channels. Usually they just go up to nine and then you do zero. Like, yeah, there's 12 channels on this thing. And then to record, you have to push play and record at the same time. I mean, that's cool. Now that we've gotten through everything on tier one of shelf number two, let's get to cleaning.